Hey YouTube, how's it going again? It's been a little while since I made one of these videos. Of course, this is our group build custom project video that I've been working on, along with my good friend Mike's model car garage. This was supposed to be a group build, but apparently it's kind of turned into a buddy build. Anyway, sorry for my reach. The reason why we've been a, a little bit behind here at the Monster Hobbies Creative Studio well, it's because I, I had to take a part-time job at a bowling alley and that ended <laughs> after about a month and a half. I guess I was not uh, bowling alley material. Well, there was a lot of running around and everything to do and yeah, part-time, only working a few days a week. It, it just didn't add up for me. Anyway, so with all that out of the way, today I thought we would carry on with working with our underbody for the T-Bird. Now, if you watched the video series before, you notice that uh, when this T-Bird goes together into the little pegs here, if I can do this right. Now, it's supposed to line up with these uh, peg, it's a peg and post type assembly. There we go. So, ooh. that goes together like that and everything. But one of the problems that I have is with the front uh, little air dam thing, I guess it is, or the rolled pan is what it is. So the problem is with the body up in here like this, the rolled pan doesn't really want to like glue right to the bottom of the fenders there. So I'm kind of wondering if uh, AMT when they redid the front end because this used to screw together and that's why you got the holes underneath So the screws would drop through and I wonder if they just made this too thick or something like that And the other thing I noticed is there's a lot of flash onto the underbody uh, So perhaps You know, it's hitting interfering up in here into those wheel arches that are in there So I'm going to try to clean this up and uh, see if we can't get this to fit better. And that's the view of this video. So let's go down to the bench and see how it all turns out. Here we have our chassis, and I think in order to clean these up, I'm gonna use my number 11 hobby blade, my number 16 hobby blade, that file, and of course our sanding block. So we'll just move this stuff out of the way. Now, first off, we have a little clip off point right here on the side rail. And that was actually from the factory. I can see a lot of flash on the sides here. It's a flash in the pan, as it were. Ooh. So I'm going to use that cross sanding technique. So we start at a 45 degree angle this way, and then flip the sandpaper a 45 degree angle this way. And if I hold the block properly, you'll notice that it is nice and flat along here now. Um, yeah, very exciting stuff. How many of you out there have built this 57 T-Bird in the past? Let us know down in the comment section below. Okay, hang on, I'm going to just move this for a minute. One thing I did notice up here is there are some mold marks. That's on the top of the uh, A-arms, the upper A-arms. And this could be a spot of interference. So I'm just going to scrape these down with that number 16 hobby blade. There we go. So, of course, I've been watching uh, Mike's Model Car Garage. So hang on, I'm just going to stick this up here. I keep calling it Mike's Model Car Garage. It's Mike's Model Shop. <laughs> That's why I have a stick-it note off the side of the uh, camera where you guys can't see it. Anyway, yeah, so Mike's Model Shop, he's uh, working on that nice 59 El Camino. And it's turned out to look pretty nice. It's funny, in the comments I suggested that he painted his hood flat black, and with the paint issues he was having, I see that he's done it. It looks pretty good, actually, in the flat black. But, uh, you know, if Mike decides, he will repaint that. Either way, it's going to look good. And I hope my model will look as good as his. But I, I do think I'm chasing all these imperfections out quite a bit, so... See how it all goes in the end.
Now, uh, of course you guys realize that I am an online hobby shop, and, or I have an online hobby shop. Of course, this is the Monster Hobbies channel. <laughs> and, uh, of course I've been thinking about, you know, in the future I want to reopen as a brick and mortar store. So, currently right now, just to get my my hopes up and, well, my mind thinking on more positive things, I'm thinking about you know, potential future brick and mortar monster hobbies stores and coming up with some neat little ideas. Which of course are all trademarked and copyrighted and patented. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, just getting some ideas, you know, trying to remember what we did originally when we opened the store up in 2004. Realizing that I I missed that original feel of the store because it was a lot, a lot more groovy <laughs> back in the day. And uh, when I do reopen a brick and mortar, that's the direction I want to go into. And of course, I'm working with a friend of mine on, you know, a few things that will make that new store pretty cool. But of course, I can't do a brick and mortar right now, so we're going to start implementing some of the new ideas into our online store. And that's pretty much about all I can tell you at this point because of course I need investors or an investment of of money to get things going so where that money is coming from currently is my own efforts <laughs> but we'll see what goes on anyway so I'm cleaning up the top of these uh, exhaust pipes this is where the manifolds are gonna touch right there and there from our nice chrome plated engine which of course was uh, in one of the earlier videos for this group build or <laughs> buddy build or me building whatever it <laughs> turned out to be okay actually those are kind of inconsequential right now scraping these for uh, test fitting the body to this frame where i really need to go is right up in here on the top of these wheel arches so let's focus on that area now this is interesting because there's so much flash up in here that uh, it's kind of hard to figure where the top is actually supposed to be so let's just use our adzing technique <laughs> i think it's spelled a d z i n g or a d z i n g Anyway, this is where part of that issue is. And I think, like I said, maybe another part was right there on those tops of the A-arms. It's nothing worse than a little bit of plastic flash sticking up somewhere that's interfering with the fit and finish of the model. Okay. Now, I know I'm going off camera a bit. <laughs> It's not too easy to build a model like this, you know? It kind of goes against the natural flow of things. I'm also trying to watch some of your channels out there. But it's uh, pretty hard right now because I'm also uploading all the stuff from our... from boxes onto the Monster Hobbies store website. One of the things that we're doing is collector cards from movies from like the 90s and uh, we just finished doing Hook that old film with Robin Williams where he plays uh, Peter Pan as an adult of course and there's a hundred cards in those sets plus 11 stickers so if you ever want to check that out online just for fun the thing is each one of those sets takes us about well us <laughs> me since i'm the only guy doing this um, my family's been helping out but it takes us three days to put a hundred of those cards on because you gotta scan each image sometimes the cards have a different image on the front than the back and then we have to take we're taking the text from the cards so to say like you know um, Peter Pan is played by Robin Williams and, you know, whatever else, right? Uh, Julia Roberts plays Tinkerbell. 
Uh, but anyway, we're taking all that information off the back of the cards and putting it in the description. So there's a lot of uh, intensive work on the website end of things. <laughs> so that's where my focus is right now, because like I said before, I had that part-time job at the bowling alley, but it didn't pan out. So now I'm putting myself right back into the website in order to get it all ready for you know, the next phase. And uh, unfortunately, we have like 300 sets of those cards at 100 cards each. Some of them, like the Star Trek cards I've got, I think there's 300 in that one or more. I can't even remember, so... Yeah, if you're wondering why I'm not making so many videos in that, that's that's the reason right there. It's just non-stop putting these cards in on all hours of the night, <laughs> you know? Ah, uh, man. I want to get on to uh, the new stuff. Yeah, there's going to be a few new things going on. We're get, getting a new uh, sticker for the back of our car. The old one had our store address on it, but since we're no longer in that building, we're getting a new one that says Monster Hobbies Online. And uh, we are waiting for the sign shop to finish. Now, the lady at the sign shop gave me a proof that's like a an image of what what it's going to be like you know and then if i don't like the proof we can change it a bit before we actually make the sticker but the proof looks really good she uh, came up with some neat ideas on my con pardon me my concept there so again it turned out really nice so that's our first step in re-advertising the store is to get rid of the old address and put on the words online so now people know we're a internet-based store. One of the cool things I've been doing uh, unboxing, we're now into the 80s on the model car unboxing videos and uh, I was looking through my models. I, I don't have many in the 80s but I found out I have a lot in the 90s. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. In the 90s was when I turned 18 and was able to get my first car, or cars. Uh, I, I've had a lot in my life. I still do. <laughs> and uh, one of the cool cars I had was, of course, the 72 Oldsmobile Cutlass S, because in the 90s, all those 70s cars were now 20 years old, and they were everywhere. So, you know, you... You guys that were the baby boomers that got to enjoy all those muscle cars when they came out new, Gen X, which is my generation, were able to buy the muscle cars secondhand. So we got the same thrills you did at a fraction of the price. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine, he, uh, it was kind of a shame, you know. There was this older gentleman that was selling a 72 Buick Skylark. And this is like 1996 or 4, maybe? Somewhere in that ballpark. <laughs> and I had a my neighbor, who was about a year or two older than I was. He was obsessed with James Bond. <laughs> so, this guy was selling a Buick Skylark. And it was kind of like my Cutlass, you know, the... Well, of course, it is like the Cutlass, the Buick style. And it was an older gentleman. I think he was like, nah, must have been 60s or 70s at, the, at that time. And he wanted to sell his Buick Skylark. And the Skylark, it had a bit of rust here and there. But it was still really in good sound shape, like the old guy had taken care of it and everything. And... Uh, I mean, it was good. Like, it had the 350 Buick motor in there, I believe, if I remember this correctly. Mine was a 350 Olds. It still is. And, uh, I think the guy wanted, like, <laughs> seven or eight hundred bucks for this thing, whatever it was. Eh? And my buddy, we did a test drive in it. And my friend went home, thought about it. And he didn't, he did not buy this Skylark because James Bond would not drive a Buick Skylark. <laughs> so what does he do? He gets snowballed into buying this 68 Mustang that was bagged 
like suspension bagged, engine dead, uh, or like barely turning over, rust everywhere. Like this was a nightmare, but he bought it because da -na, da -na, na -na -na, James Bond would drive a Mustang like he did in whatever that movie was from 73, Majesty's Secret Service or something. Eh? 73. So, so I got to drive my olds around. The Buick never got sold to either of us. I don't know whatever happened to that. And my buddy bought a lemon that, that sat in the backyard rotting away. But I won't make fun of him too much because I've done my share of that too. But I never had the excuse of James Bond <laughs> for that portion of it. So... <laughs> Yeah, I had a little more sense in buying dead derelict cars than uh, James Bond would would not drive a Buick Skylark. But anyway, oh man, all this funny stuff that you remember. Look, okay, that's interesting. See how uh, one side of this fender apron has this big notch here and then the other side doesn't? I wonder what that was about. Okay, so here's the front end now of... Hang on. The T-Bird. Let me just try to get some of this down a little in here. Nothing more fun than scraping seam lines. <laughs> but it all adds to the beauty of the kit at the end. And everything is nice and clean. You're so clean. Yes, you're clean. But your face looks like it went through a machine. Remember that Bugs Bunny one? Bunny of Seville? <laughs> okay, let's uh, grab the body. Let's see if this thing is actually going to pinch up tight on the bottom. One nice thing about these pins is it will always give your undercarriage the proper alignment. <laughs> Bugs Benny playing that last key with his ear. Okay, does that look any better? Looks the same to me. <laughs> oh, we're going to fiddle with this thing all night, aren't we? Actually, I can see that the gap in here has opened up a bit more than what it was. Now, you may hear this funny ticking noise every now and again. I think my camera lens is trying to autofocus and there's something in it that's interrupting it. So you'll hear this tick, tick, and it's trying to, it's almost like it's trying to hop down or something. I don't know. There, you can hear it now. Tick, tick, tick. Ah, actually those top of the, okay, wait, I think I'm starting to see where this is hitting. Gee, how would I? I am not sure how to clear that. <laughs> well, that's annoying. Let's just grab the... There, let's see. I know I'm doing this video all in one take. <laughs> Is it actually fitting better? Or am I just pushing that at an angle? Uh, it's so close, but it's not there. You know what I think has to happen? I think I have to saw this off right here. That little brace. Saw it off. Uh, hmm. Yeah, saw the thing off and glue this to the edges of that end. Like, it, the original instructions do not show this thing at all. Here, let me grab those. Okay, I'm holding this by hand, so it'll be a bit shaky. But you see, this comes right down, and there's, the flat pan is just there. And well, I guess it's still the same. They only added those pins in there from the screws. But for some reason, it's just... You know what? I'll, I'll bet you anything. When you screw this together, that will cinch it up. But again, even if it's like all the way down... As I'll press press as hard as I can here. It's still 
like riding up against the bottom. Oh, wait a minute, maybe it isn't. <sighs> Dang, you know what I think I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to say screw it. <laughs> let's let's take the pins out, drill through and see if I can find some old screws and jam them in there. Okay, I've been cleaning up the frame a little bit, and here's something else I noticed. There's these little marks in here, which are, of course, uh, some kind of weird thing that's in the mold. So with my flat file, since I haven't used this yet, i just take these and push them right off. File them right off. Just in order to get these inner wheel aprons smoother. So there's sort of my technique of doing this. So now that one is gone, and I've cleaned them all up on this side. So again, we'll muck around a little bit. I'll cut these posts off, and we'll see how this fits together. You're watching the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage with your host, Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies Online. That's me! All right, here's our Thunderbird so far, and I've been doing a little bit of work off camera. One thing I did is put in these little blocks with the holes in them, glued them into place. Now they are actually formed a certain way, so when you get this kit and put them together, you have to rotate them around, make sure they all fit perfectly, because otherwise you get weird angles. But our main problem here is, again, this piece of plastic. Now in the old instructions, it just shows this all fitting together nicely, and then the uh, rolled panel glue in place, but somewhere over time, we have a gap issue going on. Now there's really two ways that I could resolve this. The first off is to uh, like take a Dremel or something and carve this away here so that it ends up clearing this. Or the other way is just to remove this portion here by taking our front panel and a Sharpie and trying to figure out where this back piece hits. But it almost looks like it's going into here. In fact, this almost looks like it was notched out originally to uh, clear this panel. Uh, let's see. Just sort of along there. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, it doesn't look right. At any rate, uh, I was thinking of getting screws, drilling the holes out here, and then screwing this in, but I, I really don't think I would actually gain a lot by doing that, by having this come up tight in order to clear this thing. Um, maybe, but there's two problems. The first one is I don't actually have screws that fit these holes. And oh, I put the interior here just to sort of see what would be happening. If I cut this off, there's enough of the frame and everything to still be able to glue in without it being much of a hassle. The other thing is it would be nice to actually, you know, swing the front in and push the back down because otherwise I'd have to glue this as an entire unit and then try to paint this thing, you know, with the interior and everything in it. So that's not really practical. So I think I will just cut that piece off in the front and hope for the best. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, it really is just straight across here and then out on the wheel arches, so it shouldn't be too bad. So, I don't know if the side cutters would do this pretty well. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> kind of hate to do this to this kit, but it is what it is. Ooh, that was a big click, wasn't it? <laughs> now, to make this simple, I think I'll just take the knife and just drag it along there and there, and then snap that off. So that's what I'll do. Okay, so I scraped through a bit, and now I can just break that front end off. <laughs> and now the, the actual test, make sure I didn't mess this up. Okay, so the pins go into the back there. Just going to spread that body out a little bit. It's with those fender skirts a lot hits. Okay, so now that's gone. Will this make a difference? Ha! 
<laughs> we still got the gap issue. So something else is hitting back here. Oh, it's the springs in there. Spring is in the air. Yeah, I mean, it still looks okay, so... Uh, the hard part, trying to get this out again. Okay, so where did I say it was hitting? Up on these spring bits. But this is a lot of mucking around, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, I could... Yeah. It could also come out down here a little bit. Get rid of some of that area straight in. And then maybe I'll try to cut back to this brace here. We'll see how that goes. So now using the Atlas snap saw, I actually cut straight down onto the A-arm supports and then went across this way. So first like this, then like this. And now let's see if that notching actually will help us out here. Well, there's some kid probably, <laughs> well, not a kid anymore, but like any of you guys out there laughing at me because he bought the kit back in 62 or whenever and uh, never experienced this problem at all. <laughs> here I am mucking around. Okay, let's see. Oh. Yeah, cut all that out of the way and again... Nope, maybe it'll work. Yeah, that looks a little better, doesn't it? So I think I just have to sand that down a little bit, but that seems to be what we were going after. But that almost looks uh, perfect now. <laughs> okay, so I will just perfect this up here with my sanding block. And uh, we'll see if I can get that a little bit tighter. Okay, I think I might have got this to where we need it. Although I'm going to have to hold this with my fingers for now. But there's that front end, and that's uh, without the interior or the uh, chassis in there. And the way I've cut this now, I should be able just to carefully... This is going to be interesting when I got the engine on there. But just to carefully pop it in place. Okay. <laughs> Slide it underneath. And we're pretending this is glued solid here. Slide that underneath, line up the holes in the back, and just push the back piece in. And then that should, like if it's glued, there it clears there, clears underneath, and uh, should be good. In fact, it might be best if I actually taper the front end of this up a little bit. Oh, yeah, there's this one weird piece that's sticking out. <laughs> so, I guess I could correct that right here and right now. Let's give it an angle that way. There, that, that makes it just like the other side, more or less. I'll just sand that a little. Scrape it now. That front end should just slide in there perfectly. So trying it again, just here we go, hold that in place. Now I'm gonna I'll put the little oval radiator in there and then try not to glue the radiator in, but glue that panel on. Just let it sit for 92 hours. There we go, that looks like it won't interfere quite as much. 962 hours of gluing. That's about 20 years. <laughs> I don't know. And there, we got our nice uh, fish mouth fish mouth 57 T-bird in there without it interfering anywhere using that original panel. The only thing is now we got <laughs> these great big holes and it's going to show into the bottom holes of those mounting locations, but I don't Well, I could I could glue a little piece of plastic inside here. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting a little too analytical there. But overall, this should end up looking quite nice. 
So what I'll do is, whoops, I'll glue this on and then, well, I'll glue it on for our next video or whatever. We're in the middle of this video in the next one. You know what I'm trying to say. And we'll carry on. There it is. I was able to glue this on. The glue is still wet right at this point. But I dropped in the grill, which I'll have to clean up a little bit on the edges. But there's the uh, chassis all in there. Ready and roaring to go. Didn't interfere. I didn't accidentally like stick this in and it's pried off or anything. So there's the front of that T-Bird with the nice rolled pan. Almost sort of reminiscent of a 57 Corvette, isn't it? If I put in the little uh, circular turn lights underneath, it would look very much like that Corvette. Anyway, this thing is going to look pretty cool. Let's just uh, grab this hood here. Without the little T-Bird vent. And then uh, grab the roof panel. Now, the instructions was actually saying to glue the roof panel on. But then <laughs> glue in the window in the back and then glue on the roof. And I'm thinking, well, that would be good to paint it. But then how do you prevent that window? Because it's you're hitting in what was the trunk panel right there. Oops, I lost the grill. <laughs> anyway, let's just slip that back in carefully. There. Yes, yeah, so this is going to look pretty neat once it's all together. Look at that, eh? Yep, there she goes. All right, that's enough for this video. <laughs> so I'll do the wrap up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and good luck on your version of the group build. Can't wait to see what you guys have all been working on and what you can show me. So if you want to get some amazing model kits, don't forget to check out the link down here and like and subscribe over here. And there's a great video for you to check out as well. And until next time, everybody, Happy model building!